back to another art video with me, Molly. Uh, hi, how's it going? Um, I know that it's been a couple of weeks, uh, but I'm back. And today I have some super fun stuff for you. Uh, today we're gonna talk about gouache. Gouache, gouache. Um, so if you're not familiar, gouache is a paint that can be described as being somewhat in the middle of acrylic paint and watercolor paint. So, you know, it's got sort of the uh, flowy, watery feelings of watercolor, but a little bit more of the um, opacity and deep color that you can get with acrylics. Um, I've been playing around with it for a few years, but only really committed myself uh, in the last few weeks to doing some serious practice. Um, all of the painted stuff on these pages that you can already see uh, was done with gouache. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So I thought I would just give you all a little walkthrough of what it's all about um, because it is a bit of a weird paint. Um, it's not, in my experience, one that you generally, you know, play around with in school or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it, it can be a little weird and intimidating to try a new medium. So I thought it'd be helpful to share some tips and some information. Um, so first of all, uh, we're gonna talk about the two different types of gouache because not all gouache paint is the same. So there are two different types. Uh, they're very similar, but very different. <laughs> if that's helpful information. Um, the first one, is acrylic gouache, uh, which, I mean, this is the only brand that I've ever bought, but I'm sure there's other brands. Um, basically, this gouache, once you pour it out of the tube, if you let it dry completely, you cannot re-wet it. So it's a little bit closer to acrylic in that sense. Um, it functions exactly like this other type of gouache when it's wet, but once it's dry, it's dry and there's no going back. Um, I actually really like the Acrylla gouache. I have uh, a whole bunch of different ones here. I think this brand in particular um, has some really good colors. Um, but there are definitely uses for the other type of gouache as well. So this one is just plain old designer gouache. Um, the difference between regular gouache and acrylic gouache is this type will re-wet after you let it dry. So it's a little bit closer to watercolor. Um, in the sense that if you pour it into a palette and it completely dries up, as long as you add some water and mess around a bit, it will rework. Um, it'll never be quite exactly the same as it was when it was completely wet, but you won't waste the paint if it dries out in your palette. Um, that's the number one bonus that I've found for this type is I waste way less of it. Whereas with the acrylic stuff, as much as I love it, I always tend to pour out just a little bit too much and then it dries and then I've wasted it. Um, but I tend to use a mixture of both. Um, I think that they both have really good qualities and they're honestly not too different. They're fairly similar um, in terms of their actual usage. Um, like I've, I've used a mixture of both types in all of these pictures and you can't tell once it's drying on the page. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a little bit about personal preference. Um, but if you're out there buying gouache for the first time, it's a good thing to know uh, because it definitely took me <laughs> a few purchases to realize that I was buying technically two different products. I'm gonna get into painting this little mushroom scene uh, with a snail. Um, I am using a reference picture. I'll show you what that looks like right over here. And yeah, uh, we're just gonna paint that today. And while I paint, I'm gonna talk about, uh, you know, just some tips and tricks and all of that good stuff. So let's get into it. Like acrylic and watercolor, gouache is a water-based paint. Do not mess around with the oils or solvents or anything like that, which is my preference. Uh, one of the first nice things about gouache is uh, because it's a little bit thicker than watercolor, um, but also a little bit thinner than acrylic, um, you can use it on almost any paper. So this is just in my sketchbook. Um, the paper's got a bit of a thickness to it, but it is by no means watercolor paper. Um, as you can see, it does get a little bit wrinkly because of the watery paint, but overall, I've never had any problem using gouache on whatever paper I want. 
Um, textured watercolor paper is great, obviously, but you can go a little bit thinner and do sketchbook stuff, um, which makes it a lot easier to use than watercolor, which typically would go right through paper like this and really kind of wrinkle it up in a bad way. Um, so yeah, that is one of the very first pros. So what I always kind of like to do at the beginning is just get a little bit of a base layer down. Um, sometimes I'll even do this with watercolor, um, but just for the purpose of this, we're just going to go right in with the gouache. Like I said, gouache is a water-based paint, so the more water you put in, the thinner it's going to show up on the paper. Um, much in the way of acrylic or watercolor, that's something they kind of all have in common is you can just mix them with water and get a whole bunch of different effects. Um, you definitely can use gouache straight up with nothing added to it, but I find that usually, even when I want it to be a bit thicker, I always add just a little bit of water just to help it flow a little bit. It has a tendency to get a little bit gummy in the brush, which just makes things a little bit harder. So just a little bit of water is definitely your friend. I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit to finish this first layer, uh, and then we'll be back to talk some more gouache facts. So we've let those first layers dry just a little bit. Um, honestly, gouache is pretty quick drying. Um, I would say, you know, similar speed to both watercolor and acrylic. It does not take long for it to dry out. Um, but I always like to just give it a couple minutes when I do these really watered down layers, um, just because otherwise I find that the paper gets uh, really wrinkled uh, and really wet, especially in this sketchbook. Um, so now we can really start layering some stuff on. Um, in terms of where to start with a gouache painting, honestly, I'm no expert. I would love to preface with that. Not an expert at this. I've only really been seriously using gouache for probably two months now. So yeah, this might not be the best way, but it's definitely my way. Um, I always tend to start with some darker bits, some shadowy parts, um, and then just go from there. So I'm just gonna sort of start blocking in some shadowy chunks. Um, I am using that reference, but I've kind of just decided that color-wise I'm going to do whatever I want, so there it is. But yeah, um, like I said, just sort of keeping your brush wet in the same way that you would using both watercolor and acrylic um, will make your life a lot easier when using gouache, but it can definitely be used straight out of the tube. Um, just a little bit gummier that way. One of the things that I've really started to love about using this type of paint is the fact that it's super layerable and it's really hard to mess up what you're doing. Um, I've really loved watercolor for a long time. Um, I got really into watercolor in high school um, and did a lot of painting with watercolor since then. Um, but the one thing about watercolor that can be really frustrating is there's no going back with your layering. Um, once you have laid down a dark color, it's really hard to cover it up or to change it or to put a lighter color on top. Whereas with gouache, that is not the case. Um, once the paint is dry, especially when you're using acrylic gouache and it's really dry, um, you can easily go back with a lighter color right on top of a darker color and you'll never really be able to tell the difference. Um, it's super easy to layer. It's super easy to add white highlights. There's none of that sort of uncertainty with watercolor where you often have to leave big gaps um, in preparation for future highlighting. Not a thing with uh, gouache. So that is one of my biggest pros for using this type of paint is that I can just mess up and it's not as dramatic as it might be if I was using watercolor. 
Another nice thing too is that while gouache is wet, even the acrylic gouache, as long as it's still a bit damp, even when it's on the page and still a bit damp, it's super reworkable. Um, so it's really easy to blend colors together. Um, it's easy to get sort of nice uh, gradients if you're using pretty wet paint the whole time. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it here, but even this dark blue that's started to dry but still has some wet spots, it's mixing so easily with the lighter blue that I'm bringing in to just make my life a lot easier in terms of painting out these little smooth mushrooms. I'm just gonna speed this up one more time. Uh, just this video is not 100 years long, uh, but then we'll tune back in uh, once I finish these little mushroom caps. while using gouache, very similar to while using watercolor, is while it's wet, it's easy to muddy up your colors um, in the same way that it's kind of a pro because you can get some really good blends. Um, it's also something that you should just be wary of is making sure that you are patient, you let stuff dry, especially, you know, if moving from a warm color to a cool color, that kind of thing. If you're using lighter colors like yellows, um, just, Patience is definitely key with these loose sort of water-based mediums or else you can end up with some really muddy stuff, which I mean, maybe that's what you're looking for, in which case, you know, go forth, have a good time. But if you're using gouache and you're getting frustrated because, you know, your colors are getting a bit muddy and it's not looking how you want, it might just be a case of you need to let your layers dry for a minute before you keep going. see as we're going through this little painting demo is first of all it's really quick drying like I've said um, but when it dries it dries incredibly matte um, I'm sure you can see with these other paintings it doesn't leave a glare um, which makes it great for photographing it makes it great for uh, scanning basically if you're you know want to paint something and then have a digital version of it, I would really recommend gouache. Um, there are so many things that you can paint with that leave a horrible glare, <laughs> acrylic being one of them. I find that even when I use uh, mediums to add a matte effect to my acrylic paint, it's always just a little bit glossier than I would, than I would like it to be. I mean, maybe that's my own fault, um, but I will say that since switching to gouache, the number one thing I've really liked is the excessive matteness of the finish. Super flat, almost like you went in digitally, which I love. said to like because it's so easy to layer it really takes a lot of the pressure off when painting with a paint like this uh, because if I paint something and later decide that I hate it or I need to change something it's so easy to go back and add more detail or completely cover something up and unlike acrylic you don't end up seeing the really thick obvious layers I find that you know if go back into an acrylic painting too much it's really obvious you'll have one part of the painting that's super thick um, but with gouache it seems to dry pretty flat it's, I haven't had too much problem with like, chunkiness or unwanted texture like I said it's that flat graphic kind of look no matter how much you rework it which I'm quite fond of. 
not sure if you could see that very well, but I already had a lot of black poured on here and it's completely dried out. It's from a couple of days ago. Um, and I just took a little bit of water and mushed it around a bit and now it's completely reworkable. Um, which is great, which is awesome. It means I waste way less black paint than I do other paints. Um, and honestly too, I will say that right now my overabundance of the acrylic gouache compared to the regular gouache is partially because of supply problems in art stores due to COVID. Um, I recently needed to replace a bunch of my colors because I've been using them so much and called up my local art store and they were out of pretty much everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, sometimes you just gotta adapt. But I will say that it, it would be my preference to have a few more of the reworkable regular gouache tubes um, just because I'm a huge paint waster. And, you know, gouache ain't cheap. great thing about using gouache, especially I find in like a sketchbook situation, um, for adding a bit of color and for like working out concepts for maybe bigger paintings, um, is it's great for mixed media. Um, because it dries super matte, you can go over top of it with pens, you can go over top of it with pencil crayon, um, probably other paints. I don't know how well watercolor would work, but definitely with like an acrylic, uh, maybe even markers, depending on what you've got. Um, it's just, it's super easy to just mess around with and add stuff to. So that is definitely something that I'm a fan of. I do a lot of these sort of test paintings in my sketchbook, and it's nice to be able to mess around with different techniques and try different things. if you're trying this out for the first time as well, do some color experiments. Um, because this paint is so reworkable, so layerable, um, sometimes something will dry and look a little bit different than it looked while it was wet. Um, colors might become a little bit more clear. Um, so yeah, just mess around with a little bit, you know? Try some things out before you commit to a big formal piece, like I said. Just get a little bit more comfortable with the weird viscosity and transparency because it is not a direct translation from watercolor. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. definite pro for me when using gouache is how easy it is to use gouache to outline illustrations. Um, 
I often find that with acrylic, um, sometimes, you know, the, the paint's just a little bit thick, a little bit um, heavy, and outlines, you know, can be a little bit more trouble than they're worth. And then with watercolor, it's the opposite problem. Everything's a little bit too thin. If you're outlining a dark color with a color that's a little bit lighter, you're gonna lose a lot of the outline. Kind of just gonna fade it to the background. Gouache is great because once everything's dry, you can go in with whatever color you want and do some really interesting lining techniques or just adding detail too, same kind of idea. So yeah, for me, especially for my like personal style, I find that to be a huge pro. thing that I do is just add a little bit of background. Um, I find especially for these little small tests, it's nice to just have something to sort of anchor it onto the page. Clean up the outside edges where I inevitably made a couple of mistakes because that's just who I am as a person. Stuff like this, little smudges, can just be easily covered up with a little bit of black. Um, I did end up re-pouring a little bit of black just because I find that straight out of the tube Rather than re-wetting it, you get a little bit of a thicker consistency, which is just a little bit, makes my life a little bit easier doing a background rather than having to constantly be re-wetting a dried out chunk. thing to mention about the two different types of gouache. For most of this, um, we've been using the acrylic gouache, which is the one that once it's dry, it's dry. But when you're using the other type of gouache, just regular old re-wettable gouache, one thing to keep in mind is that because it's infinitely re-wettable, it's even re-wettable when it's on the page. So after this black has dried, in this background, if I were to go and take a wet brush to it, I could disturb the pigment somewhat, um, make some smudges in it, you know, maybe take some of it off the page even if I got it wet enough and like went in with maybe a paper towel or something, which is kind of part of the cool thing about it. You can get some really interesting textures that way. I actually, that's a little bit what I did here to get this sort of glow, this lantern. I'm not sure how clear it is, but when you look it up close, you can see that the black fades a little bit around the lantern. I just went in with a wet brush and sort of took some of the black paint back off after I had painted it. Um, and I really liked that effect. I thought it worked really well. Um, but also it can be a bit annoying if you're trying to, let's say, get a completely flat, um, flat one-toned area of your painting. And every time you come in with a slightly damp brush, you are kind of messing up the paint and maybe adding you know, smudges and textures where you don't want to see them. So it's definitely something to keep in mind if you're, you know, thinking of reasons to buy one type over the other. It's just really all about the effect that you're going for, the techniques that you're interested in messing around with. But I've found that with gouache, there's, there's kind of no wrong answer. They both do so much of the same stuff. And like I said, it took me like, <laughs> took me, you know, probably too long after getting into using gouache to realize that there was two different types. It wasn't really until I started buying more of it and doing my research into what to buy that I realized that I had been using technically two different types of paint. 
So, you know, don't be like me. Google is your friend. I'm just gonna speed this up one last time to get us to the end of the painting, and uh, then we'll finish up with the big reveal. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully this was a good intro to gouache. Hopefully if it's something you've been interested in, you'll think of checking it out now. Um, thank you so much for watching as usual. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, also the background music was uh, created by my good friend Annie Kingsmith. I will put her social links down in the description as well as my own. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I will hopefully be back again in just a few days with another gouache painting video. Uh, so yeah, have a good one everybody.